Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Matrix Mash. It's been a few weeks. I'm Emily Moyer from Alpha Planet Radio and Robert from robertphoenix.com and 11th House Astrology is with me. And um, this is not going to be the typical mash. Uh, usually, even though some of the things we, dis we cover are disturbing, we are able to find some of the humor, however dark in them. But today I'm not feeling very humorous at all. Um, I know Robert talked about it a little bit on his show this morning, and I'm sure many of you have heard by now. I, I don't know what day, ex when exactly this will go out, but it will be soon. Um, Tracy Ty Twyman has passed. We don't have a lot of explanation yet, but those of us who are familiar with her work really don't need an explanation. I think we, it's pretty clear uh, what happened here, and so we're going to start kind of just with a with that, we're going to talk a little bit about Tracy, and I know Robert already did this morning, and then we may get into some other things, but um, I am not feeling like myself today, so, um, but I felt like I wanted to get on and talk about this, because she was one of my favorite researchers, and I think, I think that intuitively, I always kind of understood that if there was going to be one of us who got there first, it was going to be her, and uh, um, I was hoping for a different outcome when somebody got there first than, than this one. Um, but she was, um, I have interviewed her. Uh, she was the first solo interview I ever did. And she was very kind to me. <laughs> you know, I had just started with Randy and um, he was not able to do it that day because she could only do interviews when her child was not home. And so that meant weekdays during the day. And um, so I interviewed her by myself. That was the first one I did. I will, you can go back and watch that interview on the Off Planet Media channel. Uh, I still was very, uh, you know, novice at this, and she was very kind. And, and I told her before we started, it was my first time doing it by myself. And we actually had a pretty good show. And afterwards, she, she thanked me, and she thought, she said it, she really enjoyed it. Sometimes she doesn't know about doing shows with someone she's never heard of before. But, you know, we had a good show. We stayed in touch a little bit after that. She, I'd been wanting to connect with her again, but it was always difficult with the schedule. And then she was on and off the internet because of what was happening with her. Um, but, you know, she's so interesting because um, I don't know if you know about where she started from aside, we all know she started with the esoteric and the occult, but her first uh, thoughts about mind control was that it was BS and that people were having false mem memory syndrome. And she put out a lot of information based on that. And over the arc of her career, she came to a place where not only did she now believe that mind control was a real thing, but she, in the end, was experiencing it herself. And, uh, you know, so she got to experience that full arc of understanding what is going on in the world. And we also, in that interview, talked about, I asked her straight up um, if she felt like some of the stuff she had done about poking through to the other side, not just informationally, but actually trying to contact things on the other side, uh, if, if she had if she had been harmed by that and if she was put in danger and she did she she told me that you know sometimes when things, bad things happen to her she wonders that but ultimately she wanted to know more than she was scared and so um i have a lot of respect for her for that robert good morning yeah uh when i saw this uh i i i felt sick to my stomach <laughs> i still do yeah i mean you know, another, another, you know, quote unquote, uh, truther, or I wouldn't call Tracy a truther. I, she, Tracy was a very kind of specific individual, a very deep, esoteric, mm -hmm. uh, occult researcher who was in the business of getting to the truth. Mm -hmm. But I would not put her in the same camp as... No, she was a loner. She was not, I mean, she... While I'd say there was many people from the truther community that respected her, there was also those of her that thought she was evil because of the things she looked into and, and probably think at this point maybe that, you know, she got something that she deserved and they are wrong, um, you know, but she was a loner. Yeah, I mean, I, a couple of days ago, I heard that uh, Justin Raimundo also passed away and that was kind of shocking. And I don't, I'm not familiar with that person. You mentioned that this morning. I heard about Tracy from Randy last night, yeah. and Randy's also extremely disturbed by, by this, and he's the one who sent me a lot of, I, I heard about this last night and then got some further information from him this morning and whatnot, but I haven't heard of Justin Raimundo. You told me about him this morning. Can you tell us who that is? Yeah, I mean, he was, he was kind of a, you know, rip the skin off uh, the deep state guy, and he, mm -hmm. and he was actually very honest 
and one of, one of the few people that would look at a situation politically and address it from as much of a place of neutrality and truth as possible. Uh, and, and he's gone. And, and it's, it's, uh, it's, you know, and now Tracy, the, tra the Tracy was, was really, like I said, I felt sick to my stomach. I was, I was on GLP and I saw it's like, I couldn't believe what I was reading. Yeah. And, and uh, my experience with Tracy, fair, fairly limited. I knew who she was. She knew who I was. She booked me for Clyde Lewis's show when she was his producer. Um, I tried to, um, I tried to get her on my show after she'd written her book, which I, which uh, that that was kind of mind blowing. That whole thing. Mm -hmm. in her book, and uh, she. She has several books, but are you speaking about Genuflect? Uh, the, the the time clocks one. Oh, this is the clock shavings. Yeah. Clock shaving. Yeah. It was like, wow. Uh, and she was not in a place where she was doing interviews at that point. She, she was, Tracy was somebody who would blink on and off a lot. And based on that video you sent me, I completely understand why. Yep. I completely understand why she blinks on, she blinked on and off because she was playing with uh, some, some very, dark and dangerous people and dangerous entities. Mm -hmm. and well, the thing about Tracy that I think is different than any of the rest of us is she had knowledge, like, like we all know stuff, right? But she had knowledge at all the levels that you need to have knowledge at to be able to put together the puzzle that does not gonna make logical sense to anybody else except for the, someone who might know everything that you know, right? And so, uh, I don't know if I sent you that quote that Randy sent me that somebody posted about her, but basically, you know, when someone like that comes along, they got to take her out before she has enough time to string it together in a, in a way that will make sense to everybody else. It already made sense to her. Right. Yeah. But, but, you know, she had, you know, she was, not, she was not, she was a stay at home mom. I mean, she obviously didn't do nothing. She wasn't a housewife, but she didn't, feel the need like the rest of us to go out and get a lot of other jobs. I know she worked for Clyde for a time being, but her, this was her life's work. She wanted to know. And so she researched at that deep esoteric and had historical, mythological, metaphysical level. And also she looked at politics. I mean, she looked at things like Q, which most, a lot of us decided we didn't have time for, we thought was silly. And on large, big level it was, but I don't know if you ever heard the work she did on Q, but that was the only thing that grabbed my interest. And that was when she put that out. That was when her troubles actually began. It was about 14 or 15 months ago. Interesting. No, I, I you know, I did not, I was not up on her, her Q stuff. Can you, mm -hmm. can you distill and just break it down for people? I may have a download of that MP3 where she's talking about it. I'm sure it got, many things got removed when she deleted all of her work from the internet. But she basically was decoding it in a completely different way and had gotten into the, I can't remember all the details, but had gotten into this thing where she was basically talking about Disney World and there being a ride there at Disney World that if you were wearing this particular pin that some children had when you were on this ride at a certain point, the light would reflect about against it in a way where something opened up like a kingdom above. Hmm. Okay, and this is, I mean, this is how a lot of this stuff works. You see something from a certain angle and there's something there that isn't there from the other angles, mm -hmm. right? If you line yourself up with a certain reality, you can enter that reality. Um, and, and so I'm just giving this, like, this was a very interesting little clip she did that where she was talking about this. And then she started doing that plus, plus ultra thing on her website where she was talking more about this behind a paywall because she had recognized the complications of talking about some of this publicly. And... I, at that time, my, and, and still didn't really have too much time to dig into it. I know some people who tried to join the Plus Ultra, some with success, some with not. Because people would have, like, it seemed like they were blocking people from being able to get in there, not trace. Obviously, when you hear what was going on with her and her technology, they wanted to limit her from being able to make a living and being able to have, you know, uh, organic interaction with people online. So uh, I know some people who were able to join and others who weren't, but even the people that were able to join would have trouble logging in sometimes and whatnot. Uh, so this is where she was documenting the Q stuff. And then I think it led into some of this further things with the, the pedophilia and the mind control and other things she was finding. Um, 
you know, there's some other, a few other people, you know, Derek Bros has gotten in, he, when the last time I had him on the show, he was talking about some of these videos online as well. And so, you know, I hope he's paying attention to what's going on here. And I know he's not scared and he's going to continue to do what he does. And I encourage him to do so, but just be aware and, and be careful, Derek, because Derek is a wonderful person. He wrote, did that excellent documentary, The Finders, about the Epstein case and about uh, the Finders cult and, uh, I actually think a lot of his work has been helpful in the outcome that we're seeing now with Jeffrey Epstein, but I think there's blowback to that. And I think Tracy, you know, it's entirely possible that she is part of that. There are some, if you watch that video, we'll, we'll link to it. I know you linked to it this morning. There are some strange stuff there that's bringing up all sorts of things and thoughts and ideas in my mind, you know, about what, what is going on. Um, yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's a, it was really interest, interesting for me to watch that video and uh, the video in question was, is it's about a 25 minute video and it's mostly Tracy talking with a few visuals mm -hmm. and she, she is getting into, I'm not going to name any names, but if you want to watch the video, you can watch the video. I've got it linked up on uh, my Facebook page, the 11th house, and it's on my, my YouTube channel from today, 15 minutes of flame. Uh, and I also downloaded the video and I put it up on BitChute just to make sure that it's out there. I feel like the video needs to go viral, mm -hmm. right? I feel like it need, I feel like as many people need to see that video as possible, if only to honor Tracy and her work, right? This mm -hmm. is somebody who put her life at risk. Mm -hmm. Over and over, yeah. In order to protect her child and the future for her child mm -hmm. in this realm that we're living in. Okay. And she paid the ultimate price. Now that that child doesn't have a mother and we don't know what the conditions were, or what happened to Tracy. So it's not, it's not always uh, wise to speculate, mm -mm. but the simple math you know, the, the, the equation of the simple math looks like a very, very dark number. Yeah. And um, so anyway, maybe, maybe we'll put the link up to the video here Yeah. Uh, with the show. And that way you guys can see it and watch it for yourself. And what really struck me about that video was a couple of different things. And one is the nature of cruelty and the other was mm -hmm. the fact that there's this Gemini theme running through that video. Mm -hmm. and you'll see, if you pay attention, you'll see it on two levels. You'll mm -hmm. see one person become be one person and then become another person. Literally and figuratively and possibly literally. That's right. That's right. And in fact, the name Gemini is even used. Mm hmm. Uh, as it's ascribed to one of the characters inside that video. So when we get into Gemini from an astrological perspective, and I've always felt like Gemini is the key to pretty much everything we experience on this planet because it represents duality. The magical rituals on this planet are based around Gemini, right? They're based on the Twin Towers. Mm -hmm. uh, you, um, uh, and, and, and uh, I'm sorry, I lost, I lost my train of thought there, but they're based upon the Twin Towers, uh, the checkerboard pattern mm -hmm. of, of the chess game, of the floor of the Masonic Temple, and the Twin Towers of Boaz and Yakin. They represent Gemini, polarity, and duality, and it is between the poles of those two towers that this field is created. And that topic came up over and over and over again throughout all of uh, Tracy's work. That there's a distortion field in yep. between those two poles. Mm -hmm. And we are caught in a flux between these two poles. Have, did, did, were you a fringe watcher? Whenever they were trying to interrupt the field to move between universes, they would set up, you know, that kind of thing. And then there would be sort of energy shot between the two poles and that's how they would go into the other universe or the other dimensions or peek into the other side and things like that. Yeah. Yeah. No, I wasn't. No, I, I know you're, you're the, you're, you're the friend Sherpa. I've, I've never, I saw a few, a few episodes. Yeah. Uh, but that, that makes sense. And so in that video that, that Tracy's kind of un, unfolding 
sort of this very kind of dark part of her. how long how old was that video by the way do you know when she put that up uh so it was just posted today by crypto beast who i believe is steve outram who's also the guy who uh has exposed a lot of things about burning man and whatnot he's right. an interesting character yeah he's, uh so he said that he uh she had asked him to she had given it to him okay and i think this was her dead man switch maybe you yeah. know her dead, yeah um so i think this was her insurance file right you know what i mean or whatever because uh it was just posted on the 10th yesterday when all this came out um so you guys can go to the crypto beast and watch it or it'll be linked here I don't know how long it will stay up there. Um, so I, I'm not sure when that was made. Um, it was obviously made after Isaac Cappy's death. That's right. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, yeah, so. That's right. Yeah, so th there's, there's some very interesting things inside that video as it relates to Gemini. Mm -hmm. Because of, well, when you see the video, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. and, um, and I think she really stumbled into this very strange kind of i wouldn't call it nature of reality but like kind of oh it's almost like in stranger things i was thinking about this morning stranger things has everything except for they haven't and i don't know if they ever will but they haven't talked about the pedophilia right but it's got all the other elements of what's actually going on yeah. uh maybe there hasn't been anything much about there hasn't been anything about banking yet or pedophilia so i don't know if that's coming later or if this is one of those things they put out there to just you know make people focus in on one aspect of things because you can't hide the truth completely for much longer. Um, but yeah, it's like, it's exactly like stranger things. In fact, it, I, yeah, because, because there's the upside down mm -hmm. stranger things and Tracy winds up having a relationship with a friendship with somebody who she thought was an ally. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden that ally flips mm -hmm. and, and it's like, <clears throat> excuse me. It's like the upside down. Yeah becomes activated and now she's sort of burrowing through this underworld now mm -hmm. where she has her same computer but a different reality coming through that computer where people are not who they seemed to be right, right. where yeah right and and um and i and i can only guess how harrowing that must have felt for her mm -hmm. and, and i don't think she's a person that scares easily my perception of her from the conversation I had with her and some other emails was that she just, you know, like she, it came with the territory and she understood that. So she doesn't seem like a person who frightened easily. Um, and so the fact that she was frightened enough to remove her content from the internet and to kind of disappear the way she did for a while, she must have been really scared. Yeah. Yep. Is she in a relationship to James Twyman? I don't know who's James Twyman. So, uh, James Twyman also lives in Oregon. Huh. And James, James Twyman, Jimmy Twyman, um, is, I say, a rather dubious character in a lot of ways. And he wrote a, a book called, I think it's called The Messengers. And supposedly it was about him going to Kosovo during the time when Kosovo was getting bombed out uh, in the 90s and he winds up meeting this very wise man who kind of instructs him on the nature of life in the universe in the midst of you know kind of this hellish day-to-day -day existence it was, huh. it was it was along the lines of the uh, the Celestine you know there were these books these kind of spiritual novels yeah that were sort of happening and it fell into that category and it, it, Jimmy made it all up. Right. And which yeah. is not uncommon with that genre, by the way. Um, but he made it all up, but it catapulted him. Into, I've never heard of him. Yeah. Into uh, public, uh, sort of this public. And I, I actually, I met him, I met him once. Um, and I, <laughs> the world is so weird, you know, so I'm wondering, you know, all this is, you know, there's been a lot of activity going on in Portland and Tracy lived in Port the but Portland. But even with Twyman, there's two Twymans. Right. Gemini. Ge the Gemini effect. Yeah, I, I don't know if she, it's, she's related. If, I have no idea. Uh, she never mentioned anything like that, you know? Right. Uh, I, I was not, I mean, I had that one interview with her and, you know, maybe a dozen emails. Um, right. But, uh, uh, Oregon, there's some weird stuff going on in Oregon right now. 
Um, and did you say he was from Oregon as well? Yes. Yeah. Um, and that kind of, you know, Voodoo Donuts was in Oregon. And then some of that, if you guys look at that video, and there's a link below it in the video to, I think, Steve Outram's Burner.me page. Um, and uh, there, there's some mm, links to someone who's, Na I, something who has a show named RX Picture Show that she was on sometimes and his conversations with her where she's talking and there's something about voodoo donuts and you know she had been doing research and nothing seemed you know be, to be being done and she like felt like she should stop because of how close she is to voodoo donuts right and voodoo donuts is there in Portland we are seeing uh all of this crazy Antifa activity going on in Portland, like that was the other big, you know, that was the big story the last, you know, week and a half ago was Andy No, NGO, which is weird that his last name is NGO because I think this is uh, going on there. But uh, he was, you know, there's a lot of footage of him being beaten by Antifa and it's gotten major coverage, even in some of the mainstream media and all over the alternative media. Um, and it seems like the Portland police are siding with Antifa or something like that, right? And um, this, this, these weird Antifa things have been going on, obviously, in a lot of places, but most prevalently in, in Portland. Um, and uh, there, you know, when we hear these things being discussed in um, the, what I term the alternative media, you know, you hear Tim Poole or Joe Rogan or some of the Weinstein brothers, even though there's a lot of truth there, like one of the things that I'm hearing people talk about is, you know, like it was even in the clip with Joe Rogan of Andy No, talking about, well, maybe there needs to be laws for people not being able to wear masks. And mm -hmm. it dawned on me this morning as I'm laying there, you know, syncretizing things, trying to figure out what's going on here, that a lot of this stuff with Antiva could be to get the people who, the people who are, you know, sane minded to ask for a law where people cannot wear masks just as facial recognition software is being heavily rolled out, right? And because that yes. could become, a, that could become a tactic at some point when facial recognition software is deployed everywhere would be to wear a mask when you go out in public. I'm, uh, I'm not saying I have an opinion on that one way or another, but if you get the very people who may one day be need of a ma in, a, in need of a mask to beg for a law where you cannot wear masks, then you've gotten them to beg for their own enslavement, right? Right. Um, and so I'm like looking at that angle and Portland, I'm curious as to how much, uh, I know it's one of the places where they have a lot of the micro apartments and a lot of smart apartments and surveillance and things like that. So, I mean, there's also the other thing that came out of Portland in the last year that's been very interesting was those grievance studies papers were largely uh, come from um, Peter Bogosian, who is a professor at at Portland State who's in danger of losing his tenure because he participated in this, but they are basically exposing how ridiculous some of these left-wing academic journals have gotten with the uh, intersectionality and, you know, crazy stuff, right? So uh, if you guys can go to Mike Nana's YouTube channel and watch all the documentation of what's called the grievance studies, uh, it's very interesting. Um, so Portland seems to be, and I also know that the Weinstein, uh, Brett Weinstein and his wife, who, you know, were excavated from uh, uh, Evergreen College in Olympia, Washington, relocated, I believe, to the Portland area. So this seems to be ground zero for activity on that social level. But, I mean, look at how long, I mean, I have mixed feelings about Clyde Lewis on a certain level, but I think you did a good job explaining him this morning, right? I think you gave a very accurate representation of him. I do think he's been told not to talk about things. I know someone who's told me that and that he doesn't talk about those, you know? Mm -hmm. um, but he also has been victim of all sorts of health things, cancer, that he had that other thing with like some sort of cytokine storm in his body where, you know, he's had all sorts of very strange things happen that usually came on the heels of a unusual show. He has stepped out and had people on his show that all of the, because I consider him to be on that border of mainstream media, like a coast to coast or an house, you know what I mean? He's, he's, he's syndicated, right? So um, he's had people on that other people won't have on, like my friend, Sean Gattreau, who, uh, you know, like has been ignored by everybody who talks about the secret space program and all that kind of stuff, but actually has the evidence, right? 
um, he would take the risk and have some people on. You know, he has had on Elisa on many times, talked about some really dark stuff. He had you on. Right, and, you know, I've been, on, I've been on Clyde's show three times. He's had you on, and 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 you know, I've noticed that there's been a lot of shows that you've been on once and then never again, or you had a successful show on that network and then it would be dropped and you know replaced with somebody who's nonsense and whatever. So no, no, I was I was on Higher Side Chats one time, and I, I never went back on the show. Never I, went back. I don't have a problem with it. No, but it's interesting, you know, but, but he, there's you know, he's had another astrologer who I find far less interesting than you on many many times. Mm -hmm. Um, so, uh, you know, so Clyde, I think was naturally attracted to the edge and I, you're right. I think that they find a person's soft spot and for him, his soft spot is his health and his wife. That's right. That's right. And they right. work it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, uh, Clyde's a Pisces and he, oh, that's in, yeah, that makes sense. And he, and he, uh, uh, Pisces tend to have very wide apertures. Mm -hmm. And they're incredibly sensitive. Uh, a Clyde is not your typical Pisces. He's a he's a dragon. He's born in '64, so he's a dragon Pisces. So he's a lot. He has a lot of he has a lot of energy. And dragon people tend to have a lot of tenacity in uh, the Western uh, system. Uh, the dragon is Aries, so you know that gives you kind of an idea of what the what the dragon energy is like. And I think he's probably shaken to his core. You know, I'm I mean. Sure. This, you know, I see. So I want to read something. I found something while you were talking. It's about James Twyman and Tracy Twyman. It's kind of interesting, okay? Okay. But before I get into that, I was thinking about our, our show that we did on Joe Rogan. Mm hmm And how Joe Rogan has these kids. Yep. And I could see where Joe totally. Rogan would, would basically say, you know what? And I'm not necessarily giving Rogan a pass per se. Um, like uh, there are times when I think he needs to be a better interview. I'm sorry. I feel exactly the same. I don't hate him. I don't think we should give him a pass, but I understand what's going on. But, I think but, he's, but yeah. he's got kids. He's got kids and he's got a wife. That's right. And a good life. That's right. And so I understand him making a business decision. Mm -hmm. Alex Jones, even if you think he's an inside guy or cut out or uh, a limited hang, he's got kids too. Right. And I think Alex, Alex has suffered and maybe at the hands of his own suffering or his own, his own constitution in some ways. But I, clearly there was a different path there between the two. Well, of them. The, I think they found side. Alex's spot, soft spot really on and that's his ego. Right. And so like, and he doesn't like to be wrong and he doesn't like to admit when he is and all that kind of stuff. And yeah. at this point he's being damaged by that. At, at any point along the way, he could have, you know, been like, look, dude, I got carried away with myself and it got me into some stuff and we're on the wrong path, kids. Let's uh, course correct, right? But his ego won't allow that. That yeah, doesn't happen unless it, unless it has to do with Trump, in which case, you know. But it, it, if Trump does one thing he likes, he goes back to the, he swings back and forth. I mean, I don't pay attention. I, you know, I, I haven't paid attention to Alex for a long time. And so unless you are actively pursuing him you can't anymore because there's no clips popping up in my youtube feed to just monitor things on but um, well, he's still he's still on youtube i mean it's not the is? same that it was. Okay. Yeah. It doesn't come up in my feed anymore no because it's going through a different a different channel different pseudonym so i just want i want to this i found something really interesting um let me do a screen share on this okay this is um now and, and i'm not saying that this is gospel by any means but it's worth it was it's worth kind of going down the rabbit hole so i found this website betnet.com okay and uh, wait 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 look just real fast i just noticed that there was a comment where it said something about the roman catholic church i'm gonna read it okay because gonna, this morning when i did a remote view to try and look in and see if i could get any information all i saw was catholic symbolism so this has to this has to do with uh, James Twyman, Medjugorjev, some of his stuff. Because I did a, I did this search, right? And there's something there about Malachi Martin. I remember oh, Duncan O'Finian talking about yes. him years ago. Yeah. So this is from 2005. So we're talking 14 years ago. And this one, Kerry says, uh, Melanie, the painting may be done in a manner of style, but according to Twyman, it is a rendering and paint of a photograph. Now that's James Twyman. James Twyman. 
Here is the original photograph according to Twyman. Long neck, no feet. Malachi Martin said he had doubts about Medjugorje because Mary has no feet. He made a reference to hooves under the dress. Martin was an exorcist. One would think his opinion would be significant. He's a shadowy character, too. Yeah, Duncan used to talk about him. Well, Medj is getting enormous attention. He approved the pre uh, apparition uh, at Akita, which is said to be a continuation of Fatima as well, gets little notice. The seer, Senior Sasagawa, is a stigmatic, if I recall correctly. There is not the commercialism associated with it. It is much more in keeping with the other approved apparitions, unlike Medj. Something else interesting, the last name Twyman. Do you have a copy of William Kennedy's book, Lucifer's Lodge? The book about the priestly sexual abuse scandal that was published last year, so that would be 2003. Kennedy says he worked with Malachi Martin in attempting to get the, the, to the root of the network of the priests in the church. Anyway, the book has an introduction written by Chasey R. Twyman. Twyman has her own webzine, Daggerbird's Revenge. Were you familiar with this? Yeah, she talked about it when she was on the show with me. That was how she got started into the sort of occult stuff. She, it, was, uh, it was her own underground thing she did when she was in college. A website devoted to the Merovingian dynasty, the Knights Templar, Dan Brown, Beigent, uh, Lincoln, and Lay Material. She edits Red Dragon Press. She also has her own magical fraternity called Ordo Lapsid yep. Exilis. She talked about that with me too. In short, in OTO Lodge, she makes it quite clear in the website that they revere Lucifer. She works with a man named Bud Rice. That's Boyd Rice, by the way. Okay. Boyd Rice is uh, a full-blown Satanist. I'll keep yeah. reading. They this, had a, this, was, this was from her early days. And, uh, yeah, you know, like, they, yeah, had a, they had a falling out at one point. She and Rice went to René Le Chateau and did some digging. I don't remember what they claimed to have found. Rice is a musician and artist. His rendering of Lucifer adorns the cover of British journalist Gavin Baddeley's book, Lucifer Rising. Baddeley specializes in the occult, rock music, and trash culture, according to the jacket. During his research for his book, he was made a priest of the Church of Satan by Anton LaVey, who dubbed him a smart cookie. On page 181 of Lucifer, Baddeley writes, Boyd Rice, one of Shrink's former heretical brethren in the Church of Satan, first made his name as an experimental musician in the late 1970s under the name of Non. Early releases included seven inch singles with three or four different holes drilled so they could be played off center. An album called Pagan Music or Muzak featured, featuring a dozen lock grooves offering 12 loop tracks could theoretically play for all infinity. Rice was a pioneer of the industrial genre working in pure noise. Sounds that stretch definitions of the word music to breaking point beyond. I used to sell that stuff, by the way. Yeah, that shit's, that's the shit that opens up portals, right? It opens up a vibration. It opens up a geometry, some of those noises. And that's how some stuff gets, you know, that moves between. So she's making this connection. I don't know if Tracy R. Twyman and James F. Twyman are related or not, but they're both working with Cathar-related concepts. William Kennedy told me in email that he and Twyman do the intro to his book because she was the publisher, the only publisher who would publish his writings. Apparently he tried to get material on the scandal at the Catholic publications, but had no success. So this goes on a little bit. Now, some people basically tell her she's a nutcase. So, I mean, Tracy, this was stuff, you know, in her early days when she started looking on the other side, you know, she got you know, into really looking at some of this stuff. I don't know that she <laughs> revered Lucifer. She certainly never said anything like that to me, but that is certainly not where she was at the end of her arc or her road. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but yeah, I mean, she talked openly about that and, you know, she has a lot of, you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, so the connection is very interesting because they're mm -hmm. using the same painting. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and it could be just, you know, one of these, unusual sinks mm -hmm. but uh but there you go i mean it makes me wonder like you know we talk about things like that if we live in a simulation we talk about certain kinds of synchronicity we talk about bloodlines she does have the appearance of a certain kind of bloodline like her physicality is unusual you know what i mean her, her coloring and her features tracy, so, tracy tracy was a very unusual looking person a very unusual looking person and it makes me wonder you know does uh, you know, has her bloodline 
been involved in some of this stuff in the past? Was she, you know, is, was, were there people in her bloodline who whistle blew us on the past? If we are talking about, you know, other lives, was this something that she has an innate, you know, ancestral DNA understanding of kind of thing, right? You know, and maybe Twyman as well. I mean, there's, you know, James Twyman. It's so, I mean, there's so many things that I'm just coming to understand about this very strange place that we live and who and what we are and and uh, time and no time and that you know why was she doing this you know what i mean like there's there's you know the reasons that are obvious to some of us and then i'm sure there's a multitude of reasons and drives that she had that maybe she wasn't even 100% conscious of so twy is a derivation of the word Twyla. Mm -hmm. I was, I think I always think about when I think of Tracy Twyman, for some reason, the name that always pops in my head is Twyla Tharp. The meaning of the name, uh, the meaning of the name is woven with a double thread. Yep, that's exactly, that's it right there. <laughs> that's Tracy. She was definitely woven with a double thread. Wouldn't you agree? No doubt. And even, yeah. I mean, if you get into that last video, there is a, almost schizophrenic double thread running through it. And I'm not saying Tracy was schizophrenic, but the thread with the separation of two different entities with yeah. two different names. What she was talking about was somebody who was representing something of a double thread, yeah. That's right. Not, so, not Tracy, not Tracy. Not Tracy. But I do think that Tracy was a person who was very aware of and accustomed, accustomed is not the word, aware of and very familiar with darkness. Yes. It's very, very much. And then you may say that there would be equal parts light there. And maybe that she was driven to do what she did because of her knowledge mm -hmm. of how dark things are. Mm -hmm. And I don't know. It's, it's, uh, it, I mean, this work may have been redemption for her. You that's, know? What I, that's what I'm yeah. thinking. That, I mean, yeah. that's what I'm thinking. And, and, and maybe there is, there is a past to Tracy. I'm just speculating here, kind of opening things up. But there's a past to Tracy that we don't know about. And in this life or another. Yeah. And, she's, and she was in the process of redeeming that in some ways, right? Yeah. And we all go through different stages in life, too. Like, at one point in time, I used to think David Spangler was really great. I met David Spangler. Who's David Spangler? David Spangler was, um, he was kind of like a new age prophet, and he was one of the founding members of Finhorn. And I don't know what Finhorn is. Yeah. Finhorn is a, it's a, an intentional community. Oh, uh, we've talked about this before. In I think. Scotland, yeah. right, right. So. Yeah. You know, I was really taken with Finn, which really at the end of the day was probably an MI6 operation, to be honest with you. Yeah. You know, and I hate, and I hate to kind of admit that. Yeah. But, but on the other side of it, Finn Horn was actually really freaking powerful. I mean, I experienced some stuff there. Mm -hmm. Real, you know, fourth, fourth dimensional, fifth dimensional. Oh, it's kind of like, like an Estelin, like Estelin. High, high woo, high like woo. An, like an Estelin kind of thing. Like there's yeah. stuff going on there and there's a bunch of operations being run through it. Yeah, like Finhorn was a spiritual semiconductor, you know, yeah. really, it was, and, uh, or super collider, spiritual super collider. So anyway, David, David was one of the, after Finhorn starts to get established, he hooks up with this woman named uh, Myrtle Blinds, who's an older woman and a psychic, and she is grooming David to be this kind of new age prophet. And uh, so I started to read David Spangler's books. And one of the books he talks, one of those books, he talks about Lucifer. And he talks about how Lucifer is the light bringer and is the creative force in the world. And that if you really want to attain a high level of consciousness, that you have to make peace with Lucifer or that archetype inside of yourself. Mm. So, yeah. there, so there was a time in my life where I thought, you know, he makes sense. Like I've read William Blake, okay? This, this falls in alignment with Blake in some ways. And as I've evolved and kind of moved through time, it's like, you know, David may not have been right. He may have been right for a particular model, 
and, and maybe this is what Tracy was, mm-hmm. evol- was, yeah. evol- was evolving through. Yeah. Because, because we have ideas. We take on ideas and we think that they're interesting or they're meaningful, but ultimately they don't stand the test of time. And then yeah. we, we do something else. Yeah. 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 I mean, and she was definitely a person who, as she knew more and moved through these things she discovered, she changed, she evolved. Uh, my experience of her, uh, you know, was that she was actually just kind of like a normal mom who happens to know all of this stuff. I thought she was nice. I thought she was friendly. She did have a bit of a, he- a heavy energy to her. And I think that's what knowing this stuff and having done the things she did, I don't think there's no price for it. I, and I think she was prepared to live with that and obviously prepared to die for that. Um, and I think it's tremendously sad. I think we know things that we wouldn't have known otherwise because of her. Um, I agree with, I'd agree with that. You know, and um, I just think this is a, a huge loss for, for our community, obviously for her family. And um, I'm just almost without, you know, I, you know it, I, I, I'm not a person who uh, doesn't feel good very often. And uh, I had some strange physical sensations going on this morning as I was, you know, I could, wasn't even paying attention to the tag that Wimbledon was on and I couldn't even really pay attention to it. And I just was like, the more I sat with this, the more disturbing it got. There was no way in my mind to rationalize this or understand this or make this okay. And I think this is one we'll be feeling the sting of for a while. And, you know, I hope for her sake that, you know, something is able to be done with this information that she's uncovered. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I, I put yeah. the, I put the video up. I put it up on BitChute. Yeah. Um, so it's there. We'll put it up on the link here. And uh, I think I, I do think it's worth worth viewing, even if you get an understanding about sort of the perfidious nature of people who are <laughs> basically pretend to be one person and then wind up being another. Mm-hmm. You know whether it's literal or it's, 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 the whole th- the whole thing is just very strange very strange very, very disturbing strange. and all, you know i all i can just keep thinking about guys is you know tell your friends you love them today tell the people that you care about and you respect you know that you love them and and you know sometimes we have little squibbles and tiffs with people over really minor stuff and i think today's a day for us all to um look at the bigger picture and appreciate the people who we've learned from and that have been our friends. Yeah, I, I agree. And the thing about, you know, this little world that we happen to populate for this moment in time together is that we're not perfect. You know, we're, we're not perfect. We have our biases. Uh, we have our beliefs. We have our passions. And it's quite easy to have beefs with people. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think this is kind of a moment in time where, you know, it might be really good to look at that. You know, mm-hmm. it, do- it doesn't mean that you give people a pass if they're consistently fucking people over or right. leading people down the wrong path. But let's, let's be more objective about what we're beefing about. If that's, mm-hmm. what, you know? Yeah more objective, more compassionate to people. And let's really keep our eyes on the bigger picture and not get so lost in the weeds. So this is a very interesting event in terms of time as it relates to Epstein, Mm -hmm. as it relates to what for all intents and purposes looks like a nuclear explosion in Ridgecrest, California. Yeah. Um, the amount of damage that was done, they should, there's a picture. I don't have, there's a picture. I can tell you, these were the strangest earthquakes ever, and I've lived through quite a few. There was a it picture was, that they yeah. showed from an aerial. I mean, basically, it's like this. It's like this, where, like, like there's a, a major kind of crack in, in that area. It's, mm-hmm. it's like, like, the, like the separation, the, the, the height between one part of the landmass and another is, you can see it. You see it from an aerial photo and um, apparently they had a, they've had a massive bee die off in that area too so it, there, there's a probably a really good probability that either the nuclear reactor that's underneath the ground there at China Lake exploded or somebody exploded the reactor 
one of the one of the two. I think this is all interesting with the new new season of Stranger Things coming out the other day, where they're beaming plasma laser beams into the earth, trying to open something up. That area, China Lake, and the name of it obviously is very interesting. It's in Kern County, which, <laughs> you know, so this whole thing with Tracy has me looking at some funny stuff, right? Because they're she's talking in that video about a campground, right? Mm -hmm. And um, I have always been camping has always been a big no-no for me. And the reason that I don't go camping is because of something that happened to me in Kern County. <laughs> Kern County happens to be the only place my father has ever taken me for a nature activity. He took me river rafting on the Kern River there when I was a kid. But it's also the only place I ever went to sleepaway camp in Kern County. And mm -hmm. uh, this sleepaway camp we were sleeping in partially outdoor it was like a bed with hut like roof but no but open sides right and one morning I woke up with uh what appeared to be a spider bite over my eye and unable to open my eye and because of that I have never slept outside ever again since which seems like maybe a strong reaction but I also have almost no memory of anything else that happened while I was at that camp for two weeks right um and so uh I've targeted that time as a time some funny stuff may have gone on with me. But mm -hmm. I also know that there are lots of people out there who have been through mind control kind of stuff and projects and programs who have spent a lot of time at campgrounds, have gone camping because that's a place that they thought they felt safe, right? And what may be going on in some of these campgrounds, right? And uh, yeah, so these are all little weird things that popped up this morning, listening to you talk about China Lake, listening to Tracy talk about this campground in Arizona. Um, yeah. knowing that somehow the programs with children and pedophilia are also related to use of exotic weaponry, both nuclear, and, whether it be Lenner or regular nuclear, right? Like there seems to be some sort of energetic, if no other if, connection between those things. Mm -hmm. So... Yeah. I, I, you know, so that this happens at the same time that this Epstein thing happens, at the same time this Tracy thing happens. Um, uh, I, I, at the same time, Stranger Things is having, I just don't think this is coincidental. Yeah, the, the, the Epstein thing, I talked about a little bit this on my show today. And, and the thing that interests me about Epstein is all the people that are associated with Epstein that we don't hear about. I mean, we know who, like, you know, who might be the top level people. There's the Prince Andrews and the Clintons and, and the Dershowitz and uh, Courtney Love, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but there are other people that were involved in Epstein land that may not have been on the flight manifest or they may not have been in his black book, but they're there. They're there. And I thought about how they must be, feeling at this point, right? Knowing that there's a guy who is on ice right now who could pot, you know, you know, potentially turn their world upside down. I almost feel like I'm gonna throw up just listening, to, yeah. And so now you've got a bunch of people who are, are basically running scared, right? And, you know, probably, you know, calling their, their fixers or whatever. What's going on, what's going on, what's going on? So now you've got this thing that has been set loose in our consciousness. And these people who I think are going to start to act uh, very scared and very desperate. And that's gonna be very interesting to watch. Like, I think we'll see things with people that we don't know about that'll start to sound very bizarre. And, mm -hmm. and, and the, uh, this Epstein thing is gonna have a, a major chain reaction. Now, it may not, just like China Lake, okay? We may not see it on the surface. Like, there may be a few people who might do the perp walk, okay? Just like we saw that there is a major crack in the land and we have a Richter scale recording and all that, but we don't know what, what really is the extent of the damage underneath that Ridgecrest area. Just like with Epstein beneath the surface, we don't know what the extent of that damage is causing right now. And I believe it is causing damage. And I'd be, my sense is a lot of people are in damage control. And um, it's got, I just think it's going to be very interesting to see what happens. And sometimes these events will spill over 
into our so-called waking world or this, you know, whatever this kind of matrixy like reality we're living in is. I think they're, I think these events are connected. Yep. Maybe not necessarily from an explosion standpoint, or maybe they are. Who knows what really is going on in China Lake? I mean, they could have a lot of really weird, we don't know. Maybe some people do or some people claim to, but at least the, the kind of the impact, and I say impact socially and, and geophysically are reflective of one another. And we're back into Gemini again, right? Mm -hmm. When people found out that Epstein was arrested, that was a shock. That was like a 7.1 on the Richter scale of news. And it's the equivalent of the China Lake earthquake. So we're, we're, I think we're in very interesting territory here, <laughs> to, to be quite honest with you. It was a very unusual earthquake. I was home and felt them both. And the first one, the second one went on for a very long time. And it, but what was weird with both of them is you never really got the feeling that they were going to erupt into a violent kind of shake. They were very rolling and wavy, you know, not, I mean, nothing in, I mean, we have a lot of stuff, right? My dad has a lot of tchotchkes and things like that. Nothing fell, right? But I mean, it was going on for a long time. Um, and uh, it was different. It didn't feel like, you know, your usual. Right. I, I used to live on the Hayward Fault Line. Mm-hmm. Right on it, it ran it literally ran right under our house. And we would experience about five to six earthquakes a year in the Hayward Fault Line. Yeah. And these were, these would be violence, you know? They yeah. Violence, buckling. Yep. You could feel the foundation torque. Yeah, this was not like quite like that. This was just like. Yeah. Yeah. So getting back to your Oregon thing, you were talking about, because I was, I was listening, I was also trying to find this Twyman connection. Yeah. Um, yeah, that whole thing with, so what's going on in the cities of the United States is truly frightening. Mm -hmm. Because what's happened is that, uh, and I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use a, the word left because there is an ideology of the left that is actually performing a role, right? Mm -hmm. So what we have is the, the cities of America have basically been populated by left mayors. Mm -hmm. And you can see that these policies throughout all these cities in America are starting to look very much the same. And the policies are, this has just happened recently in Austin last week, <laughs> and people in Austin are not happy about this. Uh, you know, the city of Austin and Stephen Adler, the mayor, basically have said, well, the homeless can be anywhere they want. Mm -hmm. They can be anywhere they want down in Austin, which means that if you've got a really nice place in, say, uh, nor, you know, north, northwestern Austin. Mm -hmm. Cat Mountain, some of those play areas. Yeah, yeah. Right. If some homeless guy wanted to pitch a tent on the sidewalk near your home, guess what? He gets to stay there. That is the law now in Austin. The cops can't do anything. And this is the same thing that's happened in Seattle, the same thing that's happened in Portland, the same thing that's happened in San Francisco, and the same thing that's happened in LA. Same thing, same thing. Now, there, there's sowing the seeds of discontent. And in Seattle, I don't know if you saw the movie, uh, Seattle is Dying, the internet documentary. Have you seen that? No, okay. it's, worth, it's, it's worth seeing. Okay. And it was actually done by KOMO, a TV station in Seattle. And I'm sure they took a lot of heat for it because what they, what they were able to illustrate is that the people in Seattle, this guy ran, he ran a report on all these people that are arrested. And some of these people have been arrested 35 to 40 times over an 18 month period. And wow. just let go back onto the street. Mm -hmm. And this is what's happening mm -hmm. in the cities of America. And, and the police have been given stand down orders. Mm -hmm. Well, that's one of the things that this, so there's a clip of, there, Andy No was on Joe Rogan yesterday. Uh -huh. And you have to listen carefully with all of this stuff. So there's these group of people, you know, some of them are intellectual dark web members that are slightly more sane or are more honest lefties, right? Like the Weinstein brothers and whatnot, who they're telling this stuff and there's a lot of, 
definite truth there. But there's also this like other layer where either they don't seem to get it, which would be odd because they're very intelligent or they're intentionally not getting it on a certain level, right? So uh, he's talking about that in the this one clip where it says, uh, if you look up under the JR Eclipse channel, Andy No explains why Antifa isn't being arrested. Um, and he talks about in Portland, the mayor is also the police commissioner. And the basically they've been ordered to not arrest. So I'm assuming this goes the same for some of these other things. They've been ordered to not arrest Antifa because that might incite the crowd or the mobs, right? And the chief of police is asking the mayor to take off this leash of not letting them arrest Antifa and the mayor quote unquote, and police commissioner, which is a huge conflict of interest to be doing both jobs is, is, you know, using his position to make this a political issue and is choosing not to do that. And you have this weird situation where this is making him obviously unpopular with anybody who's right of center, but also unpopular with the extreme left because he doesn't think they don't think he's going far enough. Right. They would probably prefer that, he not arrest Antifa and that he arrest anybody who's right of center, right? right. Kind of thing. So we're in a really weird space and place here. Well, this, this gets back to a conversation we had a couple, you know, I think maybe the last episode or show we did, maybe the one before that. And it gets into psychic driving. Yeah. And these are, these are all elements at a macro level of psychic driving. Mm-hmm. That's one, that's one element, right? You know, just ramming our consciousness with this idea that there's no order anymore. There's no mm -hmm. social order anymore. And people are living with this every single day now. No social order, no social order, breakdown of the social order. And, and when that happens, then there becomes the breakdown of the individual. Well, I think that's also what was happening to Tracy with the hijacking of her technology. I think she was being exposed to electronic psychic driving through yeah. some of these people she was really interacting with and some of these other fake kinds of things. And when she tried to take it to the FBI, they didn't help her. And it led on a certain level to some breakdown for her. Right. That's a really, really good point. Because mm -hmm. in that video, she talks about how she went to the FBI and she basically had to speak to them through a, through a box. It wouldn't it, let her in. It wouldn't let her in. So, it, which is not, that which is also in Portland, where the police commissioner and the mayor are the same person. Right. Right. And so the public is being psychically driven and individuals who are aware of this level of psychic driving are being exposed to a different level of technological psychic driving that is meant to break them down. So what we're really looking at here, and, and this is, you know, this may strike people as being slightly paranoid, but it's really based on observation, is that um, really high levels of government, uh, middle levels of government, uh, business, technology, they've all been infiltrated. Mm -hmm. They've all been infiltrated uh, for all intents and purposes by what I would consider to be a satanic, luciferic group that wants to create an upside down, yeah. a str a stranger things reality. Mm -hmm. And they want to make everything that we've had as part of a quote unquote social order to be obsolete, mm -hmm. obsolete right? And they're replacing all the, these values, they're replacing just like the, the statues, whether you agree with them or not, like replacing the statues in the South. Yeah. You know, it's the it's same. It's part of our history. And, how, you know, we, 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 you know look, even if you're on the far left side, right, which is fine place to be if you come to that, that honestly and you can have a conversation, you, the, the argument should be made that we need those statues there so nobody ever forgets what happened. That's right? right. And rather than tearing them down, should there maybe be put a statue up of the person who fought against those people on the other side? Sure, maybe that's a conversation to have, right? But we should not be erasing history, no matter how unflattering it is. Right. Absolutely. You know, I've been, I've been uh, paying attention to these flash mobs that, mm -hmm. are, that are erupting. And uh, the, I started to pay attention probably about six months ago, just after school got out. Actually, that wouldn't be, that'd be about four months ago, right around May, right? What do you, May? We're in July, it's two months yeah, ago. So, so May, June, July, <laughs> about three months ago, you know, a little bit before that. Yeah. Uh, but, but I've been watching, I've been watching these flash mobs erupt. And uh, they're, 
th this is not good. This is, this, first of all, I think some of them are being astroturfed. That's a whole other discussion. But these flash mobs are coming up and you know, there was one that happened in uh, Wisconsin where these guys ran in to the North Face store and they, and they, they took $30,000 worth of goods. Right? And it, it blows my mind because there are people that will justify that. They'll justify it. Oh, well, I'm sure it was made in a sweatshop anyway. Right. You know, or, yeah, well, what do you expect? They charge such high prices. Yeah. It's a ripoff. They're just getting ripped off. I mean, you know, whatever. You know, what? It, but. Well, so, these are the same people that defend Antifa's tactics. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, so, so that happened. And then a few days later, on July 4th, in Philadelphia, of all places, right? Home of the Liberty Bell and the signing right. of the, the uh, Declaration of Independence, big flash mob goes and runs through Walgreens. And the footage is disturbing. Kids running around, knocking shit down, throwing things at the people that work there, pilfering candy bars. You know, they're in and out in about 30 seconds. They've got angles from all over the place. And it's clear that most of them are anywhere between 18 and 12 years old. Wow. And, and, and earlier in the summer, actually late spring, I saw something erupt in Chicago. Uh, a couple of weeks later, I saw something erupt in Memphis. And then the one in Memphis was really kind of scary. Like, I thought for a moment that Memphis was going to go, in, go into kind of a, you know, a, a, a full riot mode at, at some point. Well, and Memphis is a kind of a terrifying place for that to happen because the city of Memphis is encircled by a business loop. Yeah. Right. The way that that is. And so that like the way that city is sort of enclosed yeah. um, and, and the some of the history of that city, that could be kind of terrifying. Absolutely. And, and Memphis has a kind of a history of, 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 of violence. It's a pretty, yeah. violent, pretty violent place. So so this is another part of this psychic driving now is taking place. Mm -hmm. Well, I yeah. think this, yeah, the flash mobs for sure. And I think they're experimenting with organizing them online, but ultimately it'll become something that's handled remotely that is just done by activating people's nervous systems. Yeah. I mean, I, I think it's I, already in play, but. Yeah. I, I think, I think the flash, my, my, again, my, my intuition, my hit on the flash mobs is that they're being orchestrated and infiltrated. It's, it's like part of a swarm drone technology. Yeah, it is. But I, I think it's coming out of, I, th I think the flash mob strategy and deployment is coming out of Chicago. That's what oh, I probably, think. probably, yeah. Right? I think, I think this is a full-on Alinsky-esque, yeah. Black mm -hmm. Lives Matter next level. Yeah, 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 for sure. Right? And probably with some participation at a high level with the so-called um, forces of justice, right? Because we've seen sure. the CIA and the FBI, you know, get involved in COINTELPRO or... Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, or the FBI, you know, pretending to be a terrorist and getting yep. people to go get yep. involved with something and then saying, hi, you're a terrorist, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. You know, that kind of thing. So that's my sense. That's what's going on. Yeah. It's, it's, it is it's, it, because you've got a lot of people who are already disaffected, pissed off. Don't have jobs. Yeah. Or convinced that somehow this world has, you know, dicked them over. Mm -hmm. and, now gotta and, go in some, and in some cases, they're right, but this doesn't help. <laughs> Look, one could make a justification if yeah. one wanted to for just about anything. And yeah, yeah. you're right. Some people have, have a really hard place to start in life. Yeah. Okay? That's just the way it is. I don't know what it's like to have a different skin tone. I can't yeah. profess to know what that's like. And I'm sure it's not easy, okay? It's not easy. And I've seen people... Whatever their station in life ultimately transcend, make it and make it their limitations. And I don't care if you've got, you know, one stumpy arm, yep, and somehow manage to run a marathon or something because yep. there are people that do that stuff, right? Well, did you ever see that? The, the there was a documentary about it that the long lost sister who had been given away for adoption or something of Dominique Mosciano. She was born with no legs. She was born just with an upper body, and that was it. And it was given up for adoption. Right. And uh, they ended up, you know, coming together years later. Dominique Mochiano, she was a gymnast as well. She found a way to do gymnastics with no legs. Right. And Dominique Mochiano was her favorite gymnast. And she found out later that that was her sister. Oh, right. Wow. 
and, and you know, then they made a book or something together, you know. So you have one here who is an Olympic champion and one who has no legs. And the one with no legs almost seemed to be a happier person than Dominique Mociano. There's, there's the Gemini effect again, right? Yeah. Interesting. Um, one of my clients, her name is Joe. Her son was born with no legs. Mm -hmm. And he got, a, he got a scholarship to MIT. You see... Yeah. I mean, I, th I think, and, and, and by the way, he was not born into a family of privilege. Trust right. me on this. This is a family, hard time family living in the South. So, you know, we, we can transcend our condition in life. It doesn't mean that some people don't have it bad. Some people have, are born into a situation where it could be super challenging. Yep. We, get that. we totally get that. But this stuff doesn't help. It doesn't help. No. No. It doesn't help. Um, All right. What else you got? Well, are you think we're done? Maybe you think we're done? I think so. I, so yeah. I wanted I wanted to show this picture though. Okay. This, do you want me to show this this one picture that I found? As that, long that, as it's that, not going to get us a copyright strike. <laughs> yeah, I'm famous for that. Um, yeah. That's it's that Jade Helm picture. Oh yeah, this is weird. You were telling, yeah. So you, so you guys got to see this. This is a trip. So. Uh, uh, my friend Kimberly was in uh, was in Oregon recently, and she's she's kind of on the outskirts of the wine business. Anyway, she got this newspaper, Willamette Valley, who knows what it is, right? Okay, more Oregon here, more Oregon since our focus is Oregon today. Yeah, and uh, she saw this. She sent this to me. A Georgia peach, who put down roots in the Willamette Valley, Jade Helm. Yeah. Provided wine education through articles and consumer trade publications. Speaking engagements and classroom instruction for the past five years. Her expertise is evidenced by credentials from the Society of Wine. Jade Helm. Who right. has a name called Jade Helm? Well, it, and, and I mean, think about, so Georgia Peach, we got the Guidestones, right? Oregon is where all this weird stuff is coming from. I mean, a lot of weird stuff comes from Georgia. Her name is, she's, she's kind of weird looking. She's, uh, look. Um, we are not casting aspersion not a judgment. on Jada, but I and have to actually stop. look at the picture to her right. That left side, the side of that guy's face almost looks like Alex Jones with his beard now. She's an odd looking person, this Jade Helm, right? Yeah. So I don't know if this is anything or not anything at all, but it is a little weird. Would and you, it's more would Oregon. You, would, you, would you let Jade Helm babysit your kids? So no, you, I would not. I wouldn't either. Mm-mm. And she's not exactly what you think of when you think of a Georgia peach. It's not a Georgia Leave peach. Leave it at that. <laughs> no. I've seen Georgia peaches. I know what they look like. Right. Yeah. yeah. That might be like a Georgia rhubarb. All right. So, yeah. So, uh, I think we'll wrap up here. Um, I'm just kind of feeling very blah. So, um, Tracy Twyman, goodbye. Thank you for your contribution. And um, Yeah, wherever you are, Tracy, I hope you're I hope you're navigating and getting through the through the dark portals if there are any. I'm glad I got to meet her and talk to her, you know. Um, yeah, so I think we'll just leave it at that. We'll post, the, we'll post the video yeah. and as kind of a, a, you know, memory of Tracy and, you know, please share it. It's worth sharing. Yeah. At the very least, it's the least we can do for somebody. Right? Go, hug, go hug the people you love and... Um, yeah. Yeah, and you people in the truth sort of, you know, the truth movement or whatever, alternative research, if you got a beef, maybe you want to put it on the back burner. Yeah. It's a good time for that. Yeah. All right, guys. Have a good day. We're out. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.